Hey guys, Xelion here with another video. This time I'm gonna focus on tips, tricks, super armor and frontal guard frames and other little things that when properly applied and mastered will make you a better Musa overall. I will also talk about my add-ons and why I decided to pick the ones I use. I will briefly talk about my crystals as well and towards the end I will also take the chance to briefly discuss skill builds. With that say, let's begin. So, the first thing I want to talk about is S-Block, better known as walking backwards. This is the worst possible way for a Musa for sustaining block, because it will drain your stamina with every hit you received and not by every skill. So we're talking about 150 stamina per hit, and as you all know stamina is a very very valuable resource for us to waste it like that. You might use it very briefly in group wars or group fights, maybe 2-3 steps in and that's it, don't overuse it, rather block with the katana if you're behind. Instead, get used to C-swap blocking, which I will get in more details later on, or simply blocking with the katana. The next trick I want to show you is how to perform charge stoop arrow from awakening weapon without C-swapping. First you will need to quick slot stoop arrow 1. From there, all you have to do is use it through quick slot and immediately after cast charge stoop arrow with a side step. The faster you do it, the more natural it feels. Now, let's get into super armor and frontal guard frames. This is huge and very important. And a lot of people, myself included in the past, had a wrong perception about when exactly the protected frame ended. So in this fiery angel we see that even a very very small frame after being back to idle position, he still has super armor. But in this one, the frame already ended when I attacked. Basically the super armor will last until you get back to idle position and the same applies to all super armor skills, while Fiery Angel being the one that takes the longer to recover to idle position. With Below the Belt you can see that I try to stiff as he recovers, failing due to the super armor, but I manage to soon as the animation ends. And that's pretty much it for the super armor frames, so now let's move to the frontal guard frames. Now, the thing about Frontal Guard is that we have several ones of them and each one recovers at its own speed. But tracking when a Frontal Guard actually ends it's easier because as you exit Frontal Guard, your blocking meter starts to refill. But the principle remains the same as Super Armor, it ends when you're back to idle position or if you move by whatever means. And it obviously works with Blade Swap as well. But you have to be careful, because the recovery is faster than with the crescent blade, as you can see in the blocking meter filling back up. And of course, works in any direction you want to swap your weapon. And it works the same with super armor, if you move, the protection will end. Ok, so to finish this frontal guard section, I like to throw in light into some misinformation a particular Musa was spreading. The statement was that if you see swap and do Rising Storm right away or any other skill, you get about 20% of that skill front guarded, and that way you could use blade skills in safety. Which is not true, and here I'm going to prove it. You can see I started a C swap front guard in motion and as soon as I start to cast Rising Storm the frontal guard ends and it is the same with any other skill. If you want to use a blade skill it's at your own risk, you are not protected. The next thing I'm going to talk about is backflow cancel. I know a lot of you know how to cast it after Fiery Angel but very little know how to cast it after the actual upper slash and all you have to do is add shift to the commands. And as a little bonus you can also use it after full play.
Now that I have explained these tricks, I'll get into their uses, Fire Angel and all of the Super Armor frames. As you can see in this video, how the Maiwa got baited by Fiery Angel a couple of times. I use it mainly to bait people. Very few know that we are completely CC immune and they say you are standing like tarts, so they think we are just fucking up. From there, I will follow up with my opener of choice, Twister. Finally moving to the add-ons. This is my personal choice and by no means is the superior or only way to go and they are completely adapted to all of my combos and are pretty much triggered in every start of any of my combos. So if you're using the combos from my previous guide, I suggest you take this for better benefit. Let's start with the blade add-ons. Blooming and Dragon Bite are no brainers. Dragon Bite needs critical hit rate buff and the second one is up to everyone. I don't need the attack speed right after because I generally use crosscut after Dragon Bite, so I will get my attack speed from there. Regarding Blooming, it's straightforward, raw damage, and attack speed since there isn't any other useful one. As for the third one, it's completely up to you. I prefer Rising Storm because it's usually there after my Bloomings. Honestly, anything is fine as their option. Now let's move on to the Awakening ones. Critical hit rate is a huge stat for us and increases our damage output an insane amount. So that's why I try to always have Blind Cross buff up as well as 20% add-on up. Crosscut is a no-brainer, attack speed and the second choice is up to you. WP Regain is a good option as well. Backflow main add-on is the crit buff. The second one is up to you as well, since there isn't any remarkable choice. As for counter assassination, I use it to console backflow and it's used very often so it's basically 10 AP and 15 DP up at all times in any fight. Most of my combos start with Twister because it's a fast and safe CC offering frontal guard. I then proceed to Shout because I require a stun as an actual chain opener. From there I generally use Crosscut, Backflow and Counter Assassination, triggering all of my add-ons for any path I want to take from there, be it Projection, Blooming, Blow the Belt and so on. Regarding skill builds, this is not like any other MMO where there are several skill builds that heavily influences your gameplay. All I can tell you is that there are a few must have blade skills, in my personal opinion, and basically all awakening skills have to be taken and maxed, except for the basic attack, crescent blade training, which is only to be maxed when you have the spare points. With that said, I have prepared two budget builds, one for 56 and one for 58 and I will leave the links in the description below. These two builds focus on having the most have skills, they are cheap on skill points and by those levels you should have a lot more than what is stated in the site. From there you can use points in whatever you prefer. And that was it for this guide, I know a lot of veteran mooses know most of this and obviously this guide is not meant to them, but more to the newcomers and average players. If you learned something with this guide, give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy my content, feel free to subscribe, I upload a lot of PvP content and usually very often. See you guys in the next video and have a good one!